Let's talk about what happened when I tried to convert my garage into a workshop. When I first saw this place when we were viewing this house, I thought this is ideal, it's perfect, it's got loads of room. But what I didn't fully appreciate is all the effort that would be required. This place was like a garden shed on steroids. It had saws hanging from the ceiling. It had a dividing wall. It had a ride-on lawnmower and another piece of farm equipment that I still don't understand what it does exactly. It's like a big hoover, I think. All of that needed to find a new home, and that's where our troubles began. There was a lot to do, so we set about it. Clearing the place out was just the beginning. In fact, it kind of highlighted all the issues that we were going to have. Firstly, it was a great big moldy damp wall. And why was it damp? Well, it was stuff that was in the property next to ours rather than our property. There was some form of tree or shrub growing up into the roof. Ollie, our resident tree expert, uh, he is up here getting rid of the ivy. This is a temporary fix, as he has said, because it's just going to grow back, but we want to be able to put the insulation in. And then um, in short order, I will be trying to find out who the farmer is next door so that we can uh, cut it back on the other side as well. There was no insulation to speak of. It was bloody freezing out here. Furthermore, the electrics were looking a little bit shady. So there's two cables coming here. We're shooting all the way back. We've got two cables going to that. We've got one cable going to this. We've got one, two cables going over there. So this, and then we've got three cables coming over here. Nothing makes any sense. I'm confused. That's a loop. This isn't a loop though. Because it can't be a loop if it's just one cable. This one should be coming off. It's pretty old and antiquated. We haven't got the isolation that we would need for, you know, the lights versus the sockets versus maybe a welder. So we need to insulate the place. We then need to board the place out. We want some of those boards to be strong enough to have shelves on them and be able to hang things up. We need to insulate the ceiling as well as the side walls and the back wall where the damp is. We need to work out where our electricity is gonna go. We need to uprate the power supply that comes out here. We need to put in the appropriate equipment so that we you know, have a fuse box out here for everything that we need. And we need to upgrade the lighting. This was not maybe the two day job that I expected. So I called in the boys to help me. I had Pete, the professional, what he doesn't know about building, carpentry, decorating, building houses isn't worth knowing. He deals with problems much bigger than this, so he was here to keep us honest. We had Javert, the American. Previously a visual effects artist, now a triple A game developer. He does the lighting in some fancy games you see on PlayStation. He was staying over the whole of Christmas and in return for food and somewhere to lay his head, he got to look after my twins and also get real messy out here. And then last but certainly not least, we had Ollie. What? A man who's always willing to get stuck in, a designer by trade, but willing and able and scary with a saw as well. What we didn't have was our good friend Tom. The editor of all of these videos, he was laid up ill like so many people over the Christmas period, so he had to miss it this time. <laughs> and we'll get him in the future. What I am glad to say is that we're making good progress, unlike on the car. So where we are now is in a massively better place than I would have expected after about two days of working on it. There we go, the big moment. <laughs> How is Chavez cutting? Is it as good as his video cut? I don't know. <laughs> you got this, guys. Oh, that was the one to film, wasn't it? That was the one to film. <laughs> Disclaimer, they really haven't called me night guy, so. The ceiling was done, the work that was begun by Javert and Ollie has been completed. It's all boarded out around all of the awkward things that were up there, like these up and over doors. And also all of the wiring for the lighting is ready and in place for the cool lighting that we're gonna add. 
They've also built this wall at the back, which is super strong, but it's actually stood with an air gap in front of the problematic wall that we had. Super insulated, again, it makes a huge difference. It's much warmer in here. We're battened out down this side, waiting for the plasterboard and the additional sockets and things like that to happen. That's happening this weekend. And they're also going to be working on the battening of the other walls. So that will get us all of our walls insulated and finished off. We will paint them. And then we're going to add some insulation to these up and over doors as well, which should make this place pretty toasty. Pete brought in his electrician friend who's going to do an amazing job bringing the free phase out from the house to here so we can power everything we need to energize this project. We might need, you know, 30 to 40 amps to power a, a big beefy compressor or a welder. And we just don't have that at the moment. But with the free phase, we're going to be fine. We're going to be able to isolate everything. He's going to finish off all the wiring that we need for the lighting, which, along with the white paint that we'll have on the ceiling, is going to make a huge difference to how bright it is out here. He's also going to be adding loads of sockets on this side for our workbench. And that'll be for, you know, charging the drill and stuff like that. But it'll also be for some really cool stuff. So, you know, laptop computer out here, 3D scanner out here, couple of 3D printers out here, all of that kind of stuff. But it'll all be connected out here. It'll all be safe. And then we can really start cutting into this car and sorting it out. Suffice to say, there were some lessons learned here in terms of how long this stuff takes, but also how much it costs. I mean, I've done like decoration in the house and repairs, but never really thought about insulating what is, a, you know, a five by seven meter space that is otherwise absolutely freezing. I don't know what this stuff is made of, but it's really, really expensive. So the insulation and all of these kind of things, the costs have somewhat spiraled to many times what the car cost me. So far, the costs of the materials for doing this place are approaching 5,000 pounds. This isn't necessarily reasonable, but I do think it sets us up in a good position to be able to film out here in all weathers. All things considered, what I'm pretty excited about is the sheer amount of progress we have made. It's only a couple of weeks into January, and this place is halfway to being an excellent workshop and a studio space for us. We'll be able to fit both cars in here and really get to grips with some 3D scanning, some printing, and maybe even taking some parts off the car. I am dying to take the wing off this car and see where the rust is and just start cutting away at this bottom part here. I'm not gonna do it in that order. I'll seek professional advice, but we really have a place where we can work on the car inside and no matter the weather, we will be able to make progress and make this thing happen. What I'm really excited about is that we have made progress, perhaps more progress than we did during the entirety of 2024, in the first two weeks of 2025. This place was a mess. You couldn't get into it. There was issues with it. It was a shell and it was freezing cold. And now it is halfway to being our workshop and studio. Thanks a lot to my friends that helped with this, but also the community out there. I get so many unbelievable comments from really small videos. This is a small channel. It really makes me want to move this thing forward when it is hard. It's the middle of winter. I've got twins. There's no sleep. We're going to get somewhere with this car. We're going to share it all together. We're going to work out how we can make this 944 EV the best that it can be. So onwards and upwards through 2025. I look forward to sharing this project with you. Thank you so much. See you in the next one. It's cold, 